Welcome to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. Republicans call themselves the party of responsibility. Republicans have historically believed in smaller government and lower taxes, in addition to being against abortions. The party has also been generally known to represent the views of white America and or even the wealthy American. Believe it or not, some black people share those same views and some black people are wealthy Americans. But why are black Republicans often labeled as sellouts by their own black people? Well, let's get down to business, I say. (laughs) The business of being black today is are black Republicans sellouts? Please welcome the host of A Fresh Perspective, Jeff Charles. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how are you doing? Democratic strategist Bree Maxwell is here. Hi, Bree. Hey, thank you for having me. Idol Family Chair and Associate Professor of Sociology at Georgetown University, Corey D. Fields is with us. Hi, Corey. Hey, Tammy. Thanks for having me on. An author and GOP activist, Dr. Linda Lee Tarver is in the house. Hi, Dr. Hi. Tarver. Hi, Tammy. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being back, Dr. Tarver. Let's start with that magical question that I love to start the business of being Black off with, and that is why should Black people even care? Jeff, why should Black people care if Republicans are referred to as sellouts if they're Black? Um, I would say we should care because one, I mean, a lot of times when people refer to Black Republicans as sellouts, it's tech, it's a lot of times it's an intellectually lazy argument that's designed to dis- distract from actually having conversations. If you just write somebody off as a sellout or some of the other names that people throw, then you can't really sit down and have a productive conversation. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen anybody who relies on those terms who is actually capable of having a productive conversation. But the thing is, we do need to talk about the issues that affect the Black community from a lot of different angles, not just one that represents Democrats, but also one that, that may may. may Uh, represent Black people who do have more conservative leanings, because we know that in the Black community, there are a lot of things in common that that they have in common with conservatives. So to me, using words like that, it it doesn't do anything productive. There's no way it's going to move us forward. And if we're all just on the same, uh, basically on, on the same page with everything, then we won't be able to actually produce solutions that will help the Black community. Why should Black people even care, Bree? Why should Black people care if uh, Black Republicans are referred to as sellouts? So, you know, I actually agree with everything Jeff just said. And I also, as a Democrat, think the word sellout is a very harsh term to use for someone. And as I was having a conversation with someone the other day, we should have Black Republicans, we should have Black Democrats, we should have Black Libertarians, whatever you want to be, because we need to look at it from all angles and all aspects of life. Everybody's not going to think the same, and everyone should not think the same. We should be working to make sure that we have the best for the Black community. And I don't think Black Republicans are sellout. They are just following their beliefs. And we have to look at how we have our current political systems. How, why do we have the current Democratic Party that we have of today and why we have the current Republican Party of today? So I don't think they're sellers. I think they're doing what they think is best to make sure that they're taking care of our community and the needs that we have for our communities. Corey, why should black people care is the question at hand. Why should black people care if uh, yeah. Republicans who are black are referred to as sellouts? I mean, I think you can care about this, you know, beyond the politics of it, right? So partly this is a story about what does it mean to be Black or to be authentically Black? And I think Black folks should care about that partly because, you know, we're both the group that is bound by these definitions but also the group that works to primarily to determine what it means to be Black, or at least the people you should be listening to when it comes to what does it mean to be Black. So in that sense, I think, you know, this is, even if you don't care about politics, this is a story or an issue around, you know, who gets to decide what's legit Black. So I think in that sense, Black folks should care about this. Yeah. Dr. Tarver, why should Black people care whether we call you a sellout or not? Well, Black people should care whether they call me a sellout or not, because it identifies a difference in opinion and ideology. They should care because if they are narrow-minded, if there are people who are narrow-minded, not on this show, but people who are narrow-minded enough to believe that if 
I don't agree with you, your politics somehow. I have sold out the race of people. Even in the entree that you had uh, presented, I'm not wealthy. I live in the hood. I live in a inner city. My children uh, were raised here and I am certainly not the traditional rich um, Republican as some may have would think. But I have values that align more with the platform of the Republican Party than the Democrat Party. I have had the pleasure of reading both platforms because it's not an ideology that you are looking at. We're not looking at theories of Republicans and theories of Democrats. There is a written platform that people can read. And when you read them, you decide which uh, platform more aligns with your ideology, your politics and your values and your vision than you would th over the other. And so I'm not a Republican because I like the color red and our elephants. And just because I'm pro-life doesn't make me a Republican. What makes me a Republican is that I can articulate the platform for those instances of why I am. And for those who don't even know why they're Democrats, they, they don't know why. They have not read their platform. So that's that it's become we should care because they're looking at the color of my skin and making a judgment based on my my melatonin. And uh, and so that that doesn't work well. Well, uh, since you brought up Democrats, let's talk about that. Why do most black people today vote as Democrats when historically most black people voted Republican? I think we all know that that change that switched um, uh, at a point in history, but I will say Joe Biden did go on the breakfast club and said, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Correct. Uh, how does he have, um, the authority and even the chutzpah to say that is because generally and historically in, within the late 20th century, black folk have voted democratic. Jeff speak to it. You know, there's a whole, whole history behind this, Tammy. I actually did like a three hour video on the history with the with the Republican Party and the black community. I won't bore you with all the details, but really we what, got three hours. Jim. No, <laughs> no, but really the, the transition started shortly after Reconstruction. We had the rise of the Lily White movement that cropped up in the Republican Party that uh, basically alienated black folks, started, started the process of alienating black folks on purpose. And the, now this was a, a sentiment that was shared by all Republicans, but this did crop up in, in the Southern states when the Republican Party was trying to court Southern uh, Southern vote. So that happened. Then we go under FDR or he had the, the New Deal and then it just kind of went on and on. After the 60s, the Republican Party basically stopped reaching out to black voters. Now there were always people in the GOP who wanted to reach out to black voters. They just happened to be the ones who weren't in power. And with Barry Gold Goldwater in the 60s, he basically said, there is no reason why Republicans should be reaching out to black voters because we can't get the votes. Even though history showed that that wasn't true. Any time a Republican actually tried to get black votes, they, they were able to increase that share of, 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 of the electorate. But after that, you just saw them pull more away from, from reaching out to the black communities. And it's been going on and on ever since. And there's a lot of different reasons. I'm just giving a part of, of, of the puzzle here. But the bottom line is that somewhere along the line, the Republican Party became the former party of Lincoln, and they stopped making a concerted effort to reach the black community. Now, I do see that changing. I do see that there are a lot of elements in the Republican Party that want to change that and go back to what they were doing before, but that, that's going to be a transition. So I'm, I'm cautious, optimistic. Um, I, we see President Donald Trump, he actually tried to get black votes and on a second term, and he actually increased the, 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 the percentage of black votes that he got. But it's going to take a lot of that for the machine, the Republican machine, to actually start to rebuild trust with the black community. Yeah, it in a way, it seems a little like the Republicans have distanced themselves from black people versus black people distancing themselves from the Republican Party. Bree, why uh, are black people Democrats in the first place? It goes back to everything Jeff has just said and everything I said before. It, there was a shift. And with this shift, you saw more people 
were more black people shifting to the Democratic Party. And a lot of it had a lot of things to do with messaging. And I take a lot of that back to such things as Strom Thurmond. I take it back to such thing as um, Lee Atwater from South Carolina. When they started using code words, instead of using the N word, they would use code words such as busing and stuff like that. So if you're talking about busing in the state of South Carolina back in those days, that is a fear tactic to use towards white people to make sure that they alienate themselves away from black people. So I think a lot of it has to do with the messaging points that the Republican Party has been able to do. And now that the shift is changing and that the tide is changing, what the Republican Party has been able to do is make sure that they are doing outreach to black and brown communities. They are setting up shop in Hispanic communities. They're doing a lot more outreach to HBCU students and HBCU campuses. So what the Republican Party is able to do these days is make sure that they're working on their messaging point to make sure that it aligns with the values of black people. For instance, abortion. If you are a faith person, a person of faith, you will believe that you should not have an abortion. So that is aligning with a lot of people who are part of the black church. So I think to the betterment of the Republican Party uh, currently is that, that they are changing their messaging to make sure that they reach out to black communities. Yeah, you would think most Christians in the black church would be Republicans just based on the platform of abortion alone, Corey. Well, I mean, I think, you know, we can look at this sort of issue by issue and sort of calculate, like, should black people support this? Yes, no, let's look at public opinion polling. But I think another thing to keep in mind here is that across all issues, right, like for black people, there's also related to that, this sense of where does this party stand on issues related to race? And so the part, Republican Party can be, you know, anti-abortion, which aligns with, you know, sort of policy preference among conservative Blacks. But if those same Black folks feel like, well, yeah, they're anti-abortion, but also sort of anti-Black or anti-police reform. Let's or, take a break you know, right there on that note. We'll be right back on Business of Being Black. Well, welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. That's me, y'all. Let's get down to business. The business of being black today is Republicans, specifically black Republicans. Why? Why does the black community consider them sellouts? Please welcome the host of A Fresh Perspective, Jeff Charles, Democratic strategist, Bree Maxwell, Idol Family Chair and Associate Professor of Sociology at Georgetown University, Corey D. Fields, and author and GOP activist, Dr. Linda Lee Tarver. Corey, I want you to complete that thought before uh, we went to break your head. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I think the important thing to keep in mind with this is it's not as it's not enough to sort of silo issue by issue, right? For Black voters, I think they're also attuned to a general sense of how the party is responding to issues around race more broadly, and specifically for Black voters, issues around Blackness or anti-Blackness. And I think, you know, part of the challenge is, you know, the Republicans could come up with any number of policy platforms that align with sort of Black public opinion. But at the same time, if the party is sort of, you know, grounded in things like white grievance or sort of an ambivalence about pro-Black politics, it's going to be hard to get Black voters interested in, you know, massive numbers. So Candace Owens once posted a YouTube video called How to Escape the Democrat Plantation and other Black Republicans have used the same analogy of Black Democrats being on a plantation. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, about this, uh, Dr. Tarver? Are Black folks who are Democrats living on a plantation? I will tell you that there is a history that needs to be told, but the, but the truth of the matter is that the radical Republicans were uh, part of that reconstruction and lynched alongside Black folks for teaching Black people how to read. And in the cities that we have, the Democrats have done a masterful job of messaging. Abortion is now reproductive rights, and you've got a, um, you know, a, a slew of great um, messaging through the Democrat Party, but the policies are killing Black folks. And so, yes, it is a plantation when you come into a city like mine, and I will just use mine. My city, Lansing, Michigan, Not it's a capital city, and we have the seat of government, and we were number nine in the nation for the most violent crimes. 
We have a very active BLM group here, and they were able to successfully defund part of the police, getting a social worker instead who, who resigned. And yet, and yet we have high crime, low education standards, and every single piece of government here in Lansing, Michigan is run by a, a Democrat. Uh, the congressperson, Democrat, the county commissioners, Democrats, the state reps and state senators, Democrats. We have a Democrat governor. And if you cannot uh, see the policies that are going on here in our community, it is not about the race. The most racist people are those who will allow black and brown children to go, like in Detroit, 92% of third graders can't read in Detroit. I call that a crime scene. And no Republican with their salt would consider it being acceptable. It is incarceration. It is a prison and it is a plantation, in my opinion. And as other Republicans are doing, I'm in a party that does not tolerate uh, poor expectations of education, does not tolerate that. But they don't create Negro policies as in Chicago that allows you to have no cash bail because black women who are beaten and in the hospital for three days, their, their perpetrator are out of the hospital in three hours. And we're finding that they're not able to press charges because he would only be kept if he murdered her. And so we've got policies in Lansing, Michigan, that are not, uh, they're not charging uh, in my county. They're not charging for felony firearms. They're not charging for um, drugs or weapons charges or anything like that. So the and Democrats are letting America run amok is what you're saying, the basically, there, Dr. Tarver. Policies, their policies are racist, in my opinion, because it harms people who look like me. And you will not see these same policies in areas where they don't have uh, opportunity. Bree, I want you to um, I want you to comment on that. Look, Candace Owen says the Democratic Party is, uh, you know, you got that plantation mentality there, Bree. Well, if I can't call a black Republican a sellout, then Republic Republicans shouldn't say that Democrats who are Demo black Democrats are on a plantation because all of that is false. But what I will say is that if Republicans believe in education and education for black and brown children, I need them all to helicopter into South Carolina and get their Republican governor together because right now what he is doing is taking away 6.62% of our funding for our public schools and giving it to private schools. That is taking away money for our black and brown, poor and low income kids in the state of South Carolina. And also we're still what, 47, 48 in the, in the country with education. So I need for the Republican party, if they care about education to come down to South Carolina and get their Republicans in shape to make sure that one, you are funding education in the state on par to make sure that our kids are learning to how they need to learn on top of making sure that teachers are or have salaries that they need to be able to survive as well. But I think the term of being on a plantation is extremely harsh. I don't think the policies um, that Democrats are putting out are racist. I think they are doing what they need to do for the areas that they are in. If, if Democrats are putting out racist policies, then that means that Republicans are putting out racist policies as well, especially with not funding education as it should be funded in states like South Carolina. Oh no! Jeff, oh no! Jeff, let me, Jeff let's let let's let let's give uh, Jeff a chance to respond. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Yes, thank you. So, I, what I'm about to say, uh, Dr. Tarver, does not apply to you, by the way. So, I don't want you to think this does. I agree with like the, the details that you laid out. I agree with like 90, 95 percent of them because you're right. A lot of these policies are racist. Gun control is racist. Opposing school choice is racist. If we're going to talk about systemic racism, let's talk about all of it, not just when when people think that Republicans are doing it. However, the Democratic plantation metaphor or trope is the absolute dumbest messaging strategy that we have ever employed when it comes to reaching Black people. Just like Bree said, if we're talking about calling people sellouts or Uncle Tom or Coom, you're not going to convert me to progressivism by doing that. You're just going to get a middle finger. It's the same principle applies. We're not going to be able to reach the Black community by saying, hey, you're mentally enslaved and you're too stupid to know what your best interests are and that's why you vote Democrat. Nobody's going to be receptive to that as it's inaccurate, it's insulting. You're not, we're not gonna be able to insult people to our way of thinking. And when we're using terms like the term sellout, again, I think for the most part, it's unfair. I will say that there are people who bring that on themselves. 
And I'll leave that right there for right there. But honestly, like when we're you when we're when we're talking down to the black community and we and we're refusing to show up in black neighborhoods to try to, to talk to the, to, about, to, to them about about these things. We can't say that they're just on a democratic plantation. If anything, that's just an excuse that the Republican Party has given for not being able to, to get more than 10, 12 percent of the black vote. We need to do more instead of just calling people slaves on a plantation. We need to show up and actually talk to black people like they're people, not slaves. And I, and I get that that's not always the intent of people who use that term. But at the same time, we're shooting ourselves in the foot when we have our messaging all messed up and we're not just going to go and talk about the issues. Corey? Well, I mean, I think Jeff makes an excellent point there I mean, in regards to messaging. But I think another question to think about is who is this message for, right? So just because Candace Owens says something and Candace Owens is Black doesn't mean that what Candace Owens is saying is meant to convert Black people, right? And so, you know, if you can think about this across party line, if you're trying to get people to vote for you, what's the pathway in to lure them in by framing what you're offering as a party as being relevant to whatever identities they prioritize? or is it to insult them and talk bad about them, right? Like if I wanted to get people to join the Corey Fields party, my approach wouldn't be to say, oh, you're all idiots for, you know, joining the Jeff party, right? So I think, you know, in some ways, it you know, be. it's important to keep in mind that Black people aren't the only recipients of this message, right? And so part of what the work that something's saying, like, oh, the Democratic plantation does is to make white Republicans and white conservatives feel more comfortable with the sort of party's reputation around race, right? So the work isn't actually meant to get in more Black people as it is to distance the party itself from charges of racism. So, I mean, I think, you know, but, but, so we're going to take a quick idea, break. But, we're we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to I wanna ask our panel, why have parties at all? We'll talk about it when we return on The Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. We'll be back. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. And the business of being black today is black Republicans. Are they sellouts or why? Why are y'all out there calling them sellouts? Because they believe in something, because they feel strongly about something and they want to stand on the side that represents their beliefs. Dr. Tarver, I believe you wanted to chime in before we left about the statement of Democratic plantations or the Democrats being on a plantation or the Democrats having a plantation mindset. So the Democrat standard bearer right now is Joe Biden. And so Joe Biden is the one that said, if you vote for Republicans, they're going to put you back in chains. He also said to a group of Hispanics that unlike African-Americans, Hispanics have uh, thought processes that they can choose which side or political aisle that they want. They are not stuck on one uh, plantation, basically. And so he has been a segregationalist. Joe Biden, Senator Joe Biden, was a segregationalist when they came. But this is the standard bearer for the Democrat Party. And so I just wanted to share that, that we cannot revise the history and we have to present the leader of the Democrat Party as who he is. But let's not forget his history as well when we're dealing with issues of racism, this is not the man, if you ask Clarence Thomas, this is not the man who uh, embraced Black folks uh, when Clarence Thomas was being um, grilled and the high-tech lynching of a Black man. And so with respect to that issue, we, we need to be honest with ourselves. The platform is what matters. I suggest that we go back to what Israel is doing or go to a process of what Israel's doing. You vote for the platform of a particular party, and that party then chooses, based on the votes, who that leader will be. And so that is what happens in Israel. You bring out a platform for people to decide this is who we want rather than a personality. And I would argue that once, once Democrats look at the Republican platform, or at least look at it, look at it, read it, and look at the comparison for what they, they stand with, then they would choose the Republican Party. Uh, but yes, what Republican exactly Party. is the Republican platform? Well, I mean, the, the Republican platform has typically been one of conservatism, you know, limited government, uh, you know, personal, personal pro property, um, individual freedom, liberty, uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. 
Now, but th- but this brings up an interesting point that Dr. Tarver brings up because the platform that we have on the Republican Party doesn't necessarily mean that the person that we put up, the people that we put up there actually represent that platform. I mean, on the right, we complain about that all the time. I mean, we get what we call rhinos in office, and then we get people who aren't actual conservatives, but that is that is what it's supposed to be. And I think that when we get to actually being consistent with those principles and applying those principles consistently, then I think that as a as a movement, we can move forward. Bree, um, Dr. Tarver talked about your president, Joe Biden, there, you know, said he's the last person that should be talking about inclusion and diversity and equity when he's a segregationist himself. It's how he lived his Senate life. Well, we all know that President Joe Biden, all of our president, whether we want to admit it or not, is not the best wordsmith. But we also should look at the prior president we had. He may not have been labeled as a segregationist, but he is also a racist and he has displayed himself to be a racist. And he's not the best wordsmith ever either. Now, whether Joe Biden has been a segregationist or not, I know that he has had strong ties and alliances with Strom Thurmond. I do believe that people are entitled to change just as well. If if Donald Trump decides he wants to change today or tomorrow, guess what? I'll give him that. But I also realize that Joe Biden is who we have right now. And the fact of the matter is we have to hold him accountable and we have to make sure that he's doing what he needs to do to take care of the American people, not just black and brown communities, but also poor white communities. And that's the one thing that the Republican Party failed to do when they had Donald Trump in office. They allowed him to get up there and spit out the venom that he was able to spit out. They allowed him to get up there and be the racist that he was able to be. So whether we have Joe Biden, the prior segregationist that we want to label him as, right now he is the commander in chief. And right now we have to make sure we're holding him accountable and making sure that he's doing what he needs to do. Dr. Tarver, I know you want to get I, in. Oh, oh, yes, I was waiting to come in. <laughs> there, there's no evidence. When Donald Trump was given an award by NAACP, yes, by uh, Jesse Jackson, and yes, by others, when he, was a, when he provided resources in New York, especially for the Rainbow Push Coalition, get your facts straight, when the rappers wanted to be Donald Trump, he is about business. He handled the business. I would take a mean tweet and a dollar sixty-eight worth of gas right now. I will take the uh, opportunity zones that we have. I will take what Donald Trump had provided because at this point we are not electing personalities. We are electing someone to handle the business for all people. And he put America first. And we were energy independent under Donald Trump. And I bet you right now, energy independent under Donald Trump. Yes, we were. Energy independence. We were not buying from Russia. We were not buying from Iran. We were energy independent under Donald Trump when it came to our gas. And what we did, what happened January 1st, 2021, 21st, 2021, with Joe Biden is he canceled the Keystone Pipeline in which we are seeing the impacts of high gas prices. And so when you're trying to translate what that means for black and brown people, it means that we are on the low totem pole. And when it happens to, when by the time white America feels it, we have already gone through it. And so we are feeling it even now with, with pricing, with empty shelves, with our schools in disarray, and all of these other uh, events, uh, mand- mask mandates and, mas- and all of these other mandates that uh, affected our community. 40% of those who died in Michigan were black and brown people. We make up 14% of those here. And we have a Democrat uh, a governor and a Democrat president. And at this point, it is cheap talk to talk about Again, a segregationalist, because this is what he said on the campaign. But then let's floor. move on and talk about the Thank topic you. at hand here, which is Republicans or Black Republicans being sellouts. My question is, why at all have a party? Why have a party so that we can call Democrats plantation minded, that we can call uh, Black Republicans sellouts? Why isn't it America can't fix that system to where we just vote for who we want to vote for? Clearly, the system is a little jacked up when it comes to our voting capabilities. No, Corey? I mean, certainly the, you know, we're sort of 
in, as individual citizens, we're all sort of constrained by the political structure of the United States, right? So in some ways, you know, in my own research on Black Republicans, one of the things I found was that, you know, people often felt like the choices at hand didn't necessarily represent what they wanted. So people were choosing, you know, from the best available possibilities. And there's certainly a conversation to be had about, you know, can we expand the number of political parties in the United States? You know, certainly there, you know, independence. But my question is, can we not have a party at all? Why? I mean, sure. But it 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 seems like, you know, what parties do, I mean, there's somewhere there's some sort of efficiency in terms of operation of mobilizing sort of like positions and values, right? There's something and parties serve as useful notations for individual voters of what you're going to get. So, you know, it's, I mean, I guess we could have a system where individual people campaigned and laid out detailed plans about what they were about and what they were going to do and folks made votes. But I guess I'm not as sort of pessimistic around like parties as a concept. Um, I think the issue really becomes sort of what are the parties about and what do the parties stand for and how are the parties acting? And certainly you see frustration on both sides of the aisle with that. People are certainly unhappy with um, political parties in the United States as they stand across the board. Yes, we Um, are absolutely, us regular folk who are not politicians are really kind of fed up with all the parties because it seems like a high school clique. And how do you remove yourself from this high school clique? How do you decide this president thinks like me, but this senator does not? So I'd rather vote for this senator and this president. I'd rather vote for this city council member and not necessarily this governor. Jeff, can we stop with all the parties? No, unfortunately, we can't, Tammy. I mean, ever since politics has been a thing, parties have existed. If we got rid of Republican and Democrat tomorrow, give it about a few months and we'll have other parties. They may not have the same names, but we're still going to have more parties. I think the issue isn't so much whether we have parties. The issue is how emotionally tied are we to our party? Because just like you said, I mean, there are people who do it. They vote maybe Republican for president and then Democrat for mayor or whatever. The problem is that we're too attached to our parties. We're too attached to this team sports mentality where we will excuse what somebody does if they're a Democrat, but not if they're a Republican or vice versa. So I that thought, I want to let you complete it when we return on Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. Hello. Let's get down to the business of being black today, which is black Republicans. Are they sellouts? If so, why y'all calling them sellouts? This just seems crazy to me. Please welcome the host of A Fresh Perspective, Jeff Charles, Democratic strategist, Bree Maxwell, Idol Family Chair and Associate Professor of Sociology at Georgetown University, Corey D. Fields, an author and GOP activist, Dr. Linda Lee Tarver is here with us. Go ahead, Jeff, complete that thought for Yeah, I mean, I was just basically saying, I mean, there's no way to not have political parties because as humans, we're tribal. It's what we do. We we formulate in groups and that's just that's just how we work. I mean, it, we'll get with like-minded people and, and go from there. So to me, it's it like I was saying before, I think it's more important to to lessen the attachment that we have to our parties to where we can't hear what somebody else has to say if they don't have the same letter next to their, to their name. I think that that our partisanship has gotten toxic very toxic over the past five years. And I think that's it. That's a huge issue. Like we don't just think that the other side is wrong. We think the other side is evil no matter what. I mean, even if we we don't do nuance anymore. And to me, it's just, it's, it's just a team sports. Is this guy on my team? Great. I like him. I don't care what he does. He can do whatever he wants. He he can say that black people aren't black and they don't vote for him. He's on my team. It's okay. And the other side does it too. This is both sides. This isn't just one, one side. We we're, we're all doing this. I definitely agree with that. But speaking to that, uh, you bring up a great point, a very valid point. Linda, uh, Dr. Tarver, I want to ask you, does being a black Republican mean you are automatically a Trump supporter? No, it does not mean that I'm automatic a Trump supporter. I was a Republican before Mr. Trump came into the political picture. I followed uh, the platform. And I think that that's What is missing in the dialogue here is that people need to read the platform. People need to read the platform for which they hail. 
their ideology comes in, their political ideology. And I go back to Israel. They put up a platform. People read it and they vote for the platform. And then the people are selected after the fact of who will lead the, um, the, the country or who will lead in that particular area based on the platform. It forces people to look at ideals and ideology. But getting back quickly. But to I feel like the challenge with that approach, Dr. Garber, is that it assumes that, you know, Black Democrats don't actually look at the platform or don't know anything about politics. And to be fair, well, this I'm is a common attitude that I saw Black Republican activists expressed when I studied them, right? Like there's this sort of treatment of like, oh, you know, I actually put in the work to know about politics because I'm doing this different thing. No, and there's I, this I'm assumption that like it. people on the other side aren't doing that. I think no, the I'm more not. important question to ask is why is it that when people do do the research, they come away thinking the Republican Party is not for me as a black person, right? Like so much but of this conversation I, I has been about what, what black people are doing. I, I don't and know I think the a values. big part of the question should be what's the Republican Party doing such that black people feel like when a black person in, is involved in it, they must be a sellout. Like that's a whole different set but, of but, questions uh, that we again, haven't spent much time talking about. Go ahead, Dr. But, but again, it, it's not. It's not as though uh, you, you default to Democrat when you are born, if you're Black. You don't default to Democrat. You do need to do your homework to find out where you align. And I don't know what kind of research you have done, but I've been a political activist here and around the country. And I can assure you that many people, most people that I speak to and coming, I'm the youngest of 10. So I have a lot of research uh, 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 participants to, to choose from from a large family and going around and messaging to the black community. They have not read the Democrat platform. And so again, it's not- I mean, like, I come from a family that's big too, and they have so, read the platform. Well, so we're, we wash out with our anecdotes. I mean, I have, have not read the platform, but when they look at the platform, again- The Republican we, party platform I, hasn't changed I, in I, presidential I elections. But again, the platforms, make a difference with respect to people's lives. And so if you want to find out where you stand on the issues, I'm I'm sold out for Jesus. That that's who I am. So with respect to being a sellout, I'm sold out for the Lord. And there's some things in the platform of the Democrat Party I cannot subscribe to. And as we get tribal, people are very zealous and and have been as a result of the issues of going too far to the left or too far to the right. When you look at the issues that people are dealing with right now, considering abortion is one of them. Bree, I want you to jump in on this real quick. Uh, what, what's your take? It's important to people. So I think it's an assault to Black people's intelligence to assume that they're not reading the platform of either one of these parties. But I believe if you want Black people to read the platform of the Republican Party, then give Black people better leaders to look at from the Republican Party. If that's the case, then we need millions of Dr. Linda Lee Tarvers across the country doing outreach to get more Black people involved in the Republican Party. But it's an absolute insult to think that Black people are not reading the platforms of either party when, if that's the case, when Black Democrats are probably the ones going door to door, going to the churches, going to these HBCU football games or going wherever they need to go to make sure that they're doing the outreach. But it's a it's a complete insult to think that they're not reading the platforms when that's all we see. If if you're giving me these Republican talking points on TV, then that's what I'm going to base it off of. That's what I'm going to base your platform off of. If that's not what but your platform but is, platform. but let me finish, but let me finish. If that's not what the platform is, then the party needs to do a better job of getting that message out if you want more Black people to be involved in the party. And that just goes from both angles. But it's an it, absolute it, insult to think people are not reading the platforms. It, it's well, not it, an it, insult when you know that they're not reading the platform. I don't know. You can't speak for everybody, Dr. No, Linda I, I, You I'm can't speak for everybody. You can only people. speak for the bubble that you were in. You can I, only I, speak I, for I, the I, bubble I, that I, you were in. And if more, okay, well, that big bubble needs to burst because you can't sit here and say that people aren't reading the platform. I'm telling you, I've got a big bubble. It's in black and white. Well, then it's you should do a bladder. You should do a better job of getting that Republican platform out if you think that coming. people aren't reading the it, platform. Because basically, out, you are. In, I think if we're going to be fair about people. this, though, I mean, go ahead, if we're going to be fair, go ahead, Jeff. This, but if we're going to be fair about this, I mean, let's just be real. Black, white, or otherwise a lot of people don't know the platform of the party that they vote for. I, I mean, I've talked to plenty of white conservatives who have no idea what conservatism Correct. is. So, so, I mean, 
But there are also a lot of people of every race that do know the platform. So some people do the work and some people don't. I mean, this isn't just specific to black people. And I think that and I but I think the point is apt that we do. The Republican Party does need to do a better job of reaching out. I mean, I I, I honestly think that is the main reason why black people vote for Democrats at 90 percent. A lot of them, if you go to the cities, they'll say, have you seen a a Republican show up? They'll say no. Uh, In a lot of these local races, I've talked to people. I've interviewed people, Chicago, Baltimore, D.C., other cities. And and they're telling me, like, I don't get any support from the party when I go to run. When Republicans actually show up, they do well. Governor Mike Huckabee, when he ran for re-election for governor of Arkansas, he got 48% of the black vote. I asked him how he did it. He said, well, I asked for it. I, but That's he didn't right. just ask for it. He was in the community. He was at ch- black churches. He was breaking bread with black people. He didn't sit back and wait for them to come to him. He went to them. You know, Jalen Johnson, who won city commissioner in Albany, Georgia, he went out there, only 22 years old, 70% black district, and he won, and he's a conservative. So, it, it, I mean, it, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. When we actually put forth the effort, and it's sustained, it doesn't mean that we're going to always win, especially over, over short term. This is a long-term endeavor. But the bottom line is, if all Black people know about Republicans is what they see on Fox News or, what, or, or how they're characterized on CNN, then, yeah, they're, they're not really going to know. We got to go to them. And honestly, I think Black Voices for Trump did a decent job at that. I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why Trump increased his Black support. Absolutely. But we can't just focus at the presidential level. We got to go state and Absolutely. local as well and apply the same formula. So, Corey, um, Dr. Tarver questioned your research. You did do research about the prevalence of Black Republicans who are race conscious. So talk about that. Right. So one of the things I found in my study, you know, like and part of it was framed around this notion of like our black Republican sellout. Right. And what I overall found was that, you know, the majority of the black Republican activists I spoke with, you know, saw themselves as black people identified as black as black lived in black communities were, you know, sort of prioritize centering race when they came to think about politics. Right. But, you know, what happens is these black Republicans, like black Republicans I talked to said that they felt marginalized within the party because they centered race, right? Because blackness was central to their politics. And so this was more of a question around, you know, which black Republicans get a platform within the party. And part of this question of like, why do black people call black Republicans sellouts is because- Hold that thought on on the sellouts. Dr. Tarver said, you ain't talked to her. We'll be right back. That's right. (laughs) Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And the business of being black today is black Republicans. Why do we consider them sellouts? So, Bree, I want to ask you, while in office, Donald Trump uh, worked with Kim Kardashian on commuting the sentencing on several black women who were incarcerated uh, and harshly sentenced for nonviolent crimes. Is that something a racist president would do? Can we really categorize him as racist? And has any other president, did Barack Obama do that? Yes, you can still categorize him as racist because it's a form of outreach. It's a form of making sure if I can get these black and brown people out of prison, then maybe, just maybe, they will support me when I run for president again. And we don't know what any other president has done. Barack Obama released some people when he left office and, and Bush did the same and so did Clinton. So a lot of other presidents have done the same thing. It's just that what Donald Trump was able to do was a lot more publicized than what everyone else was able to do. Because we so know you for think sure it's a matter Barack of Obama publicity. Do you people. think? Do you think it's a matter of publicity? You think that Bar- Barack President Barack Obama just decided I don't have to tell people everything I do, and Trump was like, "Hey, I'm blowing the trumpet. I need everybody to know everything I do." I think well, it certainly was seems like, what you said. No. It was he was blowing the trumpet, and he wants everybody to know what he's trying to do. And no, I, you he, know, I, I still think he's that thought, a racist, Dr. but I think he did. He did a great. I give him his credit. He did a great job with doing that. But we still can't ignore the fact what the other activists have tried to do in the past to make sure that they get these black and brown people out of jail, too. But it goes back to what I said. Barack Obama did the same thing. It just was not as publicized as what Donald Trump did. Corey? No. Right. I was going to say, it's also, you know, you have to look at the sort of needs of the president, right? Like no one thought Barack Obama was a racist. 
So Barack Obama didn't have to work with Kim Kardashian and get on TV and talk about, look at all these black people I got out of jail, right? So, I mean, so, you know, in terms of like what the presidents are doing in regards to like the black communities and black voters, there's discontent across the aisle. Black people feel frustrated with like Democrat presidents, black people feel frustrated with Republican presidents, right? So like the question, you know, really for black voters seems to consistently be about what are these politicians, what are these political parties doing to support and lift up black communities? So and black right people now, got a little upset with a few people who visited Donald Trump, uh, President Trump at the time. Uh, they got upset with Steve Harvey. They got upset with Kanye West. So do you think if Steve Harvey asked for some sentences to be commuted, they would have been, Jeff? Yeah, I mean... To me, I, I don't buy the idea that he did it just to appear like that he's not racist. Everybody knows that he could have released every single black prisoner in the federal system and they still would have called him racist. There's nothing yeah. that he could have done to not be called racist. If you have an R next to your name and you're the president, you are a racist. So to me, I think I think he knows that. I think he did. Oh, yeah, I think Kanye to... West actually yeah. said uh, President Bush was a racist and didn't like black people. Right. Everybody yeah. who's a re Republican is a racist. But I wanted to just set the record straight here. He did not commute the sentence of these individuals. That was done during his time as president. Every president on their way out gets to commute the sentence of whoever they choose. That was done during the, his time as president early on and this was a he what he did which caused the information just so for your information is he eliminated the the senator joe biden will jefferson clinton bills that put black people in prison the three strikes laws and all of these other laws that did away with them now president obama did not because his vice president is the one who passed these laws, who sponsored these criminal activities and the laws. And when President Trump became president, they repealed these laws of Joe Biden's, Senator Joe Biden's laws. And that is how we have a significantly higher number of black folks. That is true. I, I, I did want to... Um... I did want to point that out. He did not. This was not one of when he released um, the the women. The it woman. wasn't. It wasn't at the end of his presidency when he. No, it was early he, on. He did, and it, it was not in his in, in within his pres presidency. And it was because Kim Kardashian uh, had a platform of her own. Uh, to, absolutely, to and Bill released. Clinton apologized to the NAACP for signing Joe Biden's bills that incarcerated a significantly higher number of Black folks, Black and Brown folks, than any other uh, than any other time in history. Linda, Dr. Tarver, tell going. us how the Tarver Consulting Company is going. Tarver Consulting is going great. I'm uh, consulting candidates. I'm a candidate myself for the Michigan State Board of Education here in Michigan. And I am one of those Republicans who are looking at uh, helping and uh, being a change agent to support these black and brown children, especially who are on the low totem pole. We've got 92% of Detroit third graders cannot read and they got $50,000 per child. And what they're doing is they're building shrines in Detroit instead of doing literacy programs. And in 1910, there was 70% literacy rate amongst Black people. And now, your company is doing what? And what, what My is your company? Is consulting. Um, small business is also political consulting for candidates. Candidates who are Republican candidates who want to make a difference, especially for Black and Brown people. Excellent. Jeff, a fresh perspective. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot going on. I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had a lot of interviews going on on my YouTube channel. Um, so it can hit my YouTube channel. I had a fresh perspective with Jeff Charles. Um, I, I just interviewed a pollster talking about not just what's going to happen in this midterm elections, but corruption in the polling system. So I'm trying to have a lot of interviews with people who, where I can go deeper. Um, I am a conservative, but I mean, if you're... If, even if you're on the on the left, you can still listen to me without getting too pissed off because I, I, I do take a more nuanced approach and I can I'll go after both sides. I don't care who it is. Um, also called Democrats plantation thing. minded, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but also my audio only podcast. You can get that wherever you get your podcasts and Apple, you know, uh, iHeartRadio. That's where it's just me just ranting about how I feel about the issues of the day. So, yeah, everything's going great.
Bree, please tell us about the services you offer on BreeMaxwell.com. So with BreeMaxwell.com, I do consulting as well. I have a few client, clients across the country, and I also am a political commentator. So you can find me every now and then on the Black News Channel, Fox News, MSNBC, and here with you guys on Fox So. Well, thank you so very much. Corey, please talk about the book, Black <laughs> Elephants in the Room, The Unexpected Politics of African American Republicans. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of the conversation we've been having today, you know, were themes that popped up while I was doing this research. And so, I, you know, I think if people are interested in the experience of what it's like to be Black and Republican, you should check out the book. In some ways, you know, I think the experience of Black Republicans in a lot of ways mirrors the experience that a lot of Black people experience when they have to move through white spaces, right? So in some ways, what's interesting about Black Republicans is that, you know, they grapple with a lot in a direct way, a lot of the same issues that Black folks who work in companies that are majority white or students who go to primarily white institutions, right? So a lot of the struggles of managing, you know, your lived experience when you're sort of faced with a majority white context, Black Republicans are grappling with that daily. And so I think, you know, it's an interesting way to think about the problems that face the broader Black community through the lens of Black Republicans. So yeah, I, I love the title. I, lo I love the title, The Black Elephant in the Room. Listen, um, we've been faced with a lot of uh, division in America lately. And, you know, you can say it started whenever, wherever. But the bottom line is we are all Americans. And so I want you to leave us with one word and that one word is how as republicans democrats libertarians the green party how in one word can we unite as americans in one word think about that in one word here we go dr tarver jesus okay all right that word did it <laughs> jeff what you got for me one word wow um, <laughs> like i got nothing nothing yeah um i would say i would say connect Bree, what you got community minded ah corey i'd say mobilize people need mobilize to i like that people. word yes mobilize well i'm gonna mobilize and get us all up out of here how about that <laughs> egif is up next that's it for business of being black with tammy mack and until next time everybody it's a blessing to be in your box on the business of being black with tammy mack on fox soul